Good morning, not good morning, good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, it is Wednesday night, and uh, I know everyone's complaining about the heat, but here in Cape May, it's been mid-80s, and so not too bad. Uh, but I know uh, the news is just going crazy with the heat right now, and uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're keeping cool and that you're doing okay. It is hot for this time of year, even though it's summer. Uh, it's a little bit too soon. Usually we're getting this stuff more in, um, in I guess, um, excuse me, just getting stuff ready here. Uh, I guess uh, more in the uh, month of um, uh, July, August. And uh, so I hope you're doing well. Please stay safe and uh, keep cool. Be cool. Keep cool. Um, be cool like me. Uh, you know, if my daughter's watching this and she's just rolling her eyes right now and so, um, and, and, uh, she's probably not watching it, but if she were to be watching it, she would just roll her eyes at my really bad, uh, dad jokes. Uh, so I am, um, I am putting this on, right on my now. phone right now so that, uh, sometimes it's easier to see people who are joining me on the phone. Uh, however, if you do join us, just want to remind you to, to just make a little comment and let us know that you're here. Where did I put my water? All right. There's another one. Um, so, excuse me. So uh, tonight uh, we are in um, Genesis 3 and Genesis 4. And uh, I want to... Um, uh, just to a recap, last week we talked about uh, the seed. We talked about how God uh, said um, that through the woman a seed will come. You know what's really interesting about this? Uh, I'm just going to say a few other things. Let me let me pray first. <laughs> uh, Father, we just pray that you would bless this uh, time together tonight. We pray that you would bless this uh, the, the your word as it goes forth. And uh, we know it doesn't come back void, and we pray that you would just make it so real to us. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, uh, by the way, if you want to give to this ministry, you can go to capemayfirstassembly.org forward slash donate. Uh, or if you just capemayfirstassembly.org, you'll see a big donate button there. Um, and uh, that takes you to a secure site, and uh, you can donate there. You could also text to give 600 uh so, I'm sorry, let me say, I always mess up that number, 609-400-4075. Um, so as I was saying, we talked about the seed last week. Uh, you know, there's something else that's just kind of interesting about the seed, and that is, um, this is the, t during COVID, the town was calling all the time. I think this is one of those things, probably about fireworks or something. It looks like the the lower township number calling my phone I'm trying to take that out okay there we go uh, <laughs> so um if you live in lower township don't answer that right now if you watch me and then answer the phone don't leave a message um so um we talked about the seed and you know what's interesting it the um the word is the seed of the woman and the, and the word seed is almost like um like uh, the word that was used, it is the word actually that was used for sperm. And God is saying that this, so it's kind of weird, right? That God would say the seed or the sperm of the woman would defeat or would crush the head of the serpent. And I think we're already getting a prophecy here of the virgin birth of Christ, because uh, it would make sense that God would say the seed of the man would um would bring forth this promise but he says it's a seed of the woman uh so let me uh take move over to our powerpoint and just let's um let's ask the question what did adam and eve know when god gave this promise uh that we talked about last week and i think they knew a lot more than you would think uh, a lot of us get the impression that well maybe adam and eve didn't know what god was talking about I think they really did know what God was talking about because of the things that happened uh, right after God promises this seed. Um, and, and so uh, let's get into that. Um, this is the first gospel promise. 
found in all of Scripture. Uh, it's in Genesis 3.15, and we read it last week, but I want to read it again. Um, it said, he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. Uh, and this is the word seed, between your seed and her seed. She shall bruise your, he, he, the seed of the woman, shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Um, and we talked about how some of the the uh, translations will actually say crush your head. And so the, the uh, blow to the heel of this seed was Christ on the cross and of course, he defeated Satan by crushing his head on the cross. What uh, Satan thought was a strike to kill the Son of God was actually a strike of deliverance to set people free from sin and death. Um, so, um, so how did Adam and Eve hear this promise? Um, and and that's kind of what I'm asking you right now. Um, and I'm trying to get my face up here, and sometimes it just... Hold on. There it is. All right. Here I am. All right. So, um, Adam... First of all, Adam changed the woman's name. I want you to uh, to really catch this. It is, um, it is in uh, verse 20. It says this, And a man called his wife's name Eve because... She was the mother of all the living. Now, I want you to catch this because this is right after God gives his speech that uh, there would be a seed and the seed would come and crush the head of the serpent. And he doles out uh, this the curses that um, the man uh, will will work by the sweat of his brow and the women, uh, the woman through childbirth would have pain. But there's this great promise of this seed that would come. And right after that, uh, it's really easy to miss, but here's this here's this verse. Uh, the man called his wife's name the man called his wife's name Eve. Um, let me get my myself out of the way. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Now now think about this. Uh, hey Todd, glad you're watching. Hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you for watching tonight. Um, so, um, here's here's what's going on. God just laid out these curses, and He said that uh, to the man, to the dust of the ground, you're going to return. He said, "The day you eat this fruit, you shall surely die." And um, and now Adam and Eve could feel death in their bodies. They could uh, they they could feel the the tiredness. They could feel what our bodies go through now. Um, and they could sense that the, the day of death was coming. But Adam doesn't say, you know, when they were all going to die and that's going to be it. He calls Eve the mother of the living. And this is actually a change in her name. And whenever in the Bible we see a change in names, we know something important is happening. Um, Eve's name before this was woman. That was her name. Adam actually mean, means man. Uh, so it was man and woman. Th those were not just a description of what they were, but that was their names. And um, Adam changed his wife's name to Eve, saying she would be the mother of all the living. And this tells me that Adam knew or had this this idea that there would this there's this promise of this seed. Um, and uh, and and so Adam knew that life was going to come back uh, because God had um, told them through this promise that there would be a seed that life would come back and that um, and then um, there would be um, there would be hope. So it's really amazing that they're thrown out of the uh, Garden of Eden and uh, they're, he's left to work the ground. And yet, what, what does he do? He changes his wife. You would think if he, he said, I'm going to change my wife's name, maybe it would be about, you know, blaming her for everything, you know, like, you know, fruit eater or something, you know, uh, or, you know, deceived or, or something. But no, he, he calls her a name that means life. And he's saying through her, 
is going to be life. So Adam and Eve have this great hope in the midst of being thrown out of the Garden of Eden, uh, that hope is going to come, that life is going to come, that there is a promised seed. And of course, we know now that the promised seed is um, is Christ. Um, and so let me uh, let me take you to the next slide here. Um, and I got a voicemail. Okay. Um, the next slide. Come on. All right. Eve names her son, and this is in vor verse one. Um, and and this is really really interesting. Um, and and I want you to catch this. Um, it says now Adam knew his wife Eve, and of course we know that means you know, having relations, um, sexual relations. It says, Now Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. In the Hebrew, and, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I read other people who are. Uh, but uh, in the Hebrew, it says this. Uh, this is how it reads. I have gotten a man, namely the Lord. Um, and and so what um, what Eve is really doing with her firstborn son is she's calling him. This goes so much deeper than just what you would think she you know when God says this seed would come, uh, because she's saying she's not just saying the way it's translated, with the help of the Lord I have gotten a man, and she doesn't call him a child. Uh, she doesn't say I got a baby. She says I got a man. Um, and it's usually translated with the help of the Lord. It's really in the Hebrew, I have a man, the Lord. That's how it reads. Um, and so what is she saying? She's saying, um, I think she's jumping the gun a little bit. And she's saying, here's the seed God promised. Uh, that, you know, God said there's going to be a seed that's going to bring us out of death into life. And it seems like she knows that this seed is actually God, is actually Yahweh, uh, Yahweh coming as a person, which is really uh, amazing if this is the case, uh, that not only does she know that a Messiah would come, that a seed would come, but she knows that God is going to be intricately involved and possibly come as a human being himself. And this is what she sees in Cain. Yet yeah, there's some, uh, some belief that perhaps um, Cain, and I'll get to Cain in a little bit, um, but there's some belief that perhaps Cain um, maybe got a big head from this because maybe they were telling him, you're the seed, you're the, you're the chosen one. Um, uh, so she, she has childbirth, she experiences the pain, but she doesn't just think of the pain, she thinks of the promise. There's the pain and there's the promise. And so she experiences the pain, but then looks forward uh, to the promise. She thinks Cain is the Savior. Um, she identifies the, the child with Yahweh himself. Um, and, and she knew the child uh, would have to be uh, God, which is just amazing. Um, you, when you go further on in Genesis, you're going to see the birth of Noah. Excuse me. And uh, Noah, Noah's father calls him Noah and says, he will give us rest. And, and really, this tells us that not only Adam, Eve, but all the subsequent generations are looking for this seed, are looking for the one that is going to come and give us rest and give us life. So in the midst of their death, in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their pain, they're looking forward to the seed. Um, and thank God we know who that seed is. That seed is Christ. Um, there's another really interesting thing in here, and I want, I want you to see this. This is so cool. Um, and and uh, the wording here is just amazing. You know, when you look at the... Uh, when you look at the Bible and um, you start to uh, see how they say things and you start to put things together, it's really amazing. Um, oh, move me around. It's really amazing um, what what is being said here. Um, and um, in um, in a verse uh, four, you yeah, right. Um, the last thing that's said in chapter 3 is that man is driven. God drives the man 
from the Garden of Eden, or the man and the woman. He says uh, they, if they stay, they're going to eat of the fruit of the tree of the of life, and that can't happen. So in Genesis 3.24, he drove the man out of the garden. Let me see if I have that scripture in PowerPoint form uh, for you. Uh, yeah, let me get my head out of there. It says, um, he drove out of he drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. And we talked about the tree of life last week. But I just want to show you something here because you go to the New Testament and this is what it says in Mark 1, uh, 12 and 13. It says the spirit immediately, this is speaking of Christ. This is so awesome. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. This is, this is so cool. The same wording here. And I want you to catch this. Adam is driven out of the Garden of Eden. Christ is driven into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. So Paul calls uh, Adam the first Adam, calls Christ the second Adam. And so Christ experiences being driven out of the land. Uh, by the way, um, the land of Israel uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Jerusalem is likened to the Garden of Eden. Christ is driven out of the land of Israel into the wilderness like Adam is driven, driven out of the Garden of Eden, but there's differences. Adam um, is driven out uh, but uh, he, because he has failed. Christ is driven into the wilderness and doesn't fail. Uh, Adam has everything he needs. He has every tree that he needs. And it, isn't, it, um, isn't it interesting that um, it, the Scripture says that Eve looked at the fruit and saw it was desirable for food and uh, and pleasing to the eyes. And so she took it and ate it. But um, what's, what's so amazing about that statement is God said you can eat of every tree of the garden. And all of that fruit was desirable for food and pleasing to the eyes. What happened to Eve is she started focusing on what she couldn't have instead of what she was blessed with. Right? What she was given. And she missed it. Um, and, and it's so sad, but this is just so amazing. Um, Adam is driven out of the garden. He has everything and he fails. Jesus has nothing and he succeeds. Uh, the, um, the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness is so similar to Adam. Um, the Satan says to Eve, and Adam was there listening to, to this, so really he was involved in the temptation as well. Um, did God really say, um, you cannot eat of any tree, right? Of course, God didn't say that. Um, and so between uh, Satan and Eve, they all mix up the word of God and change everything around. Well, what happened to Jesus right before he went into the wilderness? He was baptized. And do you remember what happened when he was baptized? He was told, this, uh, 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 a voice came from heaven saying, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Then he is driven, the scripture says, driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. And so there he is in the wilderness with no food for 40 days and 40 nights. He's really hungry to the point of starvation. And what does Satan say? If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Uh, and and was he, what's he really saying? Oh, wow, you're God's Son, and you have to be driven into the desert to not eat, to, to be hungry and to be thirsty. If you're the Son of God, just turn stones into bread. You don't have to be hungry and thirsty. Uh, but Jesus is in the wilderness because he's experiencing everything you and I have experienced. We've been driven out. You know, you can't look at Adam and Eve and say, uh, well, it's all their fault. And if they didn't fall, uh, we, you know, we wouldn't be in this, in this situation. That's not how the scripture looks at it, really. Um, we are from the seed of Adam and Eve, and therefore we were with, in, in Old Testament terms, we were within their body, 
taking part of the sin with them. And it, that's kind of what now I know that that's not literal, but that's the way the, the scriptures kind of look at that. Right. So we partook, we sinned with him because Adam is representative of the entire human race. And so you could say we had everything and we failed. Jesus had nothing and he succeeded because he is the God man. He is the one who was able to overcome sin. He was the one that was able to go into the desert and um, be obedient to his father. He was the one that would not allow Satan to twist the scriptures. Um, and he used the scriptures to overcome. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, let me just look at my notes here. Okay, I'm, that's, uh, I'm a little bit ahead myself. Um, if, you know, Satan is really asking if God is good, why would he let you go through this situation? That's what he's saying. And he's saying, if you are uh, the son of God. Um, and so um, it's just so amazing to see the parallels here. Uh, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Mark says Jesus was driven by the Spirit and Adam and Eve were driven out of the Garden of Eden, that this same word is used. Uh, it, it really speaks to us that Christ went through everything you and I have gone through. Um, and thirdly, um, I want to just talk about um, the sacrifice. I want to get into that. The sacrifice and the offering of Cain and Abel. Um, and so um, the, the um, let me check out my next slide here. Hold on. Cain and, um, okay. Um, yeah, I'll read the scripture from Hebrews in just a second. Um, the story goes like this. Cain and Abel bring a, a sacrifice to God or an offering to God. Cain brings of his first fruits of the field. And Abel brings uh, uh, some uh, sacrifices of his animals. Um, I don't want us to get caught up on the kind of um, sacrifice it is. Um, I, I, a lot of people will say um, that uh, Abel brought an animal sacrifice and Cain brought the first fruit, so that's why the sacrifice was wrong. Um, I don't buy into that because there were first fruit sacrifices in the book of uh, Leviticus and Exodus. So um, I don't think it was the type of sacrifice that uh, caused God to uh, accept Abel's but not Cain's. Um, now, it doesn't really tell us right out in the book of Genesis, but it tells us in Hebrews. Um, but here's the story. Um, God... Um, you know, Cain brings his, uh, he's a farmer. He brings his first fruits from the field. He offers it to God. God doesn't accept the sacrifice, the, the offering. Uh, Cain brings a sacrifice of animals. God accepts it. Um, and, and so Cain really gets angry. He gets really bitter towards his brother because God didn't receive his offering. And uh, God says this great statement. He says, if you do right, you, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, and I'll probably bring out that scripture next week more. But he says, if you do right, you'll be fine. But if you don't do right, sin is crouching at your door, and you must match, master it. It literally means that it's like crouching down and ready to pounce on you. Um, that That's what it means. Um, and so you know the rest of the story. Cain ends up killing his brother, Abel. I'm going to talk more about that next week. Um I, I don't. I think the clue on why one sacrifice was accepted over another is found in Hebrews, and I want to read that scripture to you right now. Um, Hebrews uh, eleven uh, verse four says this: By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his uh, through his faith, he died. Though he died, he still speaks. Wow, that is just really amazing. Um, I don't know if I can explain this well. Uh, it's just so amazing. Um, Abel, Abel came to God through faith, 
And it's going to say later in this chapter in Hebrews that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it, it doesn't matter like how good your sacrifice is and how hard you worked at it and, and how you presented it and what you do. God is looking for faith. You can't even say this. Um, it's likely that Abel was a better person than Cain. But you can't say that God accepted Abel's sacrifice because he was more righteous or more holy or better. Uh, even though it seems like Cain, Abel was probably a better person. Um, uh, but what Hebrew says is that he offered his sacrifice um, uh, by faith. And, and, and so that means Abel came to God trusting in God. And Cain offered a sacrifice, but it wasn't based on trust. Um, and so um, I'm going to put the scripture up right now because I got a problem. My uh, computer is about to go dead, so I got to plug it in real quick. So just stick with me and uh, you can uh, just just memorize this scripture right now. OK. <laughs> Amen. Okay, well, I tell you, we are the top notch when it comes to um, technology in the church, man. We don't miss anything here. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and so his offering was by faith. Um, and, and this just so speaks to us. Okay, let me let let, let me kind of start to kind of put everything together here for you. Okay. Um, Adam and Eve sinned and God didn't redeem them because they were good. Um, at God redeemed them because he was God promised redemption because he loved them. You and I are uh, not redeemed because we're good. We're redeemed because of God's grace and because of God's mercy. And the only thing that brings salvation, that brings actually anything you want from God, anything that, um, you know, you say, okay, uh, being used of God, grown in God, um, uh, being sanctified, overcoming sin, all of this stuff only comes through trust, through faith in God. And uh, it's a great prayer to say, Lord, increase my faith. Uh, you know, help me to put my trust in you. Um, because that's the only thing we can see in the whole story of Cain and Abel that made Abel's sacrifice more acceptable was that he brought it in faith. Now, if we were to look later in the Bible and God said, I do not accept any offerings uh, of fruit and vegetable offerings, I don't accept anything, they all have to be animal sacrifices, then we could say, okay, uh, Abel brought a better sacrifice because he brought the right sacrifice. But that doesn't seem to be the case. What seems to be the case is Abel came to God in faith, and for some reason, apparently Cain didn't. Cain didn't came maybe he came out of obligation it's possible that um his parents were always saying hey you're the chosen one you're you're going to be our hope you're going to be the seed that is going to uh bring uh back life to all mankind maybe that's what god maybe that's what his parents were saying they looked at cain as the um you know, as a savior, um, and, and maybe he was the firstborn, or maybe there were many behind him, or wh whatever, you know, uh, there's an old joke, you know, I, I, where did Cain's wife come from? And I'd say, I tell you, if I were able, uh, that's, you know, I know you're laughing right now, I could hear you laughing at that great joke. Um, but they, Adam and Eve obviously had other children, and uh, would have um, probably produced Cain's wife. Um, but um, and we don't know how long they were alive before this whole sacrifice thing happened. Uh, but uh, the the point is this: um, Cain simply came to God in uh, you know on his own, and Abel came to God in faith. Maybe uh, maybe Cain thought 
well, of course, my my sacrifice is going to be accepted because I'm the chosen one. I am the seed. Uh, my mom and dad keep telling me that. And maybe that's what he thought. And maybe Abel thought I'm nothing. You know, Abel's name just kind of means vanity. It, there's no real big meaning to it. Um, and, and so, you know, when when Abel was born and you read this in the scripture, like uh, Eve says, uh, you know, by God's help, I've given this man or, or calls him, you know, Yahweh, you know, really saying this is Yahweh in the flesh. And when Abel's born, uh, they just say, you know, and then, you know, they had a son named Abel. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, there's barely a mention of him and and probably wouldn't have mentioned him at all if he wasn't the first one murdered. And, and so maybe Abel thought, well, I'm nobody. I have nothing to offer to God, but I'm just going to give him my best. And I'm just going to come to him in faith and ask that he accepts me. And he was accepted. Um, and, and, and you can maybe almost picture Cain going, well, what's going on here? Abel isn't the, um, you know, he's not the chosen one. Why is, why is he being accepted and not me? Ultimately, I'm specul speculating here. The only thing the scripture tells us is this. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain. And it, what it really comes down to is trusting in God. Um, isn't that, isn't that amazing? It's almost um, really hard for us to grasp that uh, God didn't say, Abel's a better person. Abel is more righteous. That's not what God said. That's not what the scriptures say. Uh, not even, uh, you know, his sacrifice is better. That's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say, by faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice. And that's it. That's all it says. And uh, so... Um, I am accepted by faith uh, because I am connected with Christ. And, and so that's, that's kind of the whole point here. Um, Abel's offering was accepted because of what Christ would do in the future. The cross goes, uh, the cross works in the present. The cross goes forward in time. The cross goes back in time. It is the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that redeems all people according to their faith from the, from the, from the beginning of time to the end of time. It is like wherever, wherever this whole thing ends, the, Christ, the cross is going to sit right in the middle. Uh, from, for, for all the past and all the future, it is the cross that is going to be the thing that redeems us all uh, because of what Christ has done for us. Um, and, and so what it, what it really comes down to, when you look at um, the, the, the falling into sin, um, it really comes down to this. Um, do I believe what God says is true? Um, that's really what the whole uh, temptation of Christ was about, and it's also the whole temptation of Adam and Eve and every other person throughout all eternity. Every time I'm about to sin, I, I'm really asking, is what God said about this sin true? Is, has, uh, has God left something out you know, and that's really what we're asking when we sin. When we are sinning, we're, we're really saying God has left something out. There's something I can't trust him with. There's something that I can't um, go there with him. Um, and um, I, I am righteous, just like Abel. Abel was, listen to what this says. Um, I'll show you the scripture again because this is just, there's so much in this scripture. Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended, read this, through which he was commended as righteous. Well, well, who called Abel righteous? Well, here's the next phrase. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And though, and through his faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. Wow. Um, uh, I, I'm going to end on this, but um, this last phrase. Well, well, first of all, God didn't just say, hey, you got a good sacrifice, right? Congratulations. God said, you are righteous. Well, 
again, is because he was inherently a really good guy? No. Just because he came to God through faith. I mean, it's astonishing. It's amazing. Um, but then uh, look what it says here. It says, uh, though he died, he still speaks. Well, what did God say? And I'll talk more about this next week. But what did God say to Cain? He said, your brother's blood speaks to me from the ground. Well, what is still speaking, right? The blood of, of, of Abel. Uh, or you could say it's a picture of the blood of Christ that was spilled into the ground and it still speaks, right? Because the blood of Christ isn't saying bring judgment. The blood of Christ is saying bring mercy, and and when the when the author of Hebrews says the blood of Abel still speaks, or he says though he's dead he still speaks, he's saying the blood of Abel still speaks from the ground, but it's not saying bring judgment. He's saying bring mercy. Uh, it's a picture of Christ, what He has done for us, and His faith still speaks to us because we can be accepted by God just like Abel was accepted by God. We could be accepted as righteous, just like Abel has, was accepted as righteous because of the work of Christ. So today, if you're saying um, you're having one of those days, hey, Wendy, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, if you're having one of those days where you're saying to yourself, uh, boy, um, I've really blew it again. I, I don't believe God can accept me. I just don't believe uh, there's there's one more time that God can forgive me. Um, you know, do you ever feel like God just gets tired of forgiving your sin? I, I feel that way sometimes. Um, and, and I'm not trying to make anything light of sin. I'm not saying living in sin is okay or anything like that. Uh, but I'm saying, but, but I am saying that I constantly have to come to God in repentance. It never ends. There isn't like a day where I say, oh, I don't have to repent of anything today. I, I was a pretty good day. Uh, now, there, there's every day I repent constantly uh, because uh, God is working in me and making me and changing me and molding me and moving in me. And yet I can walk in the righteousness of Christ uh, because it is God that was looking for me in the garden saying, where are you? It is God that's reaching out to me and saying, I'm going to bring you a seed. It is God who sent his only son who was driven into the wilderness just like Adam was uh, to, to, to be tempted of Satan but overcame that temptation. It is God who sent his son who went to the cross for me. It is God who raised his son from the dead and set him, uh, seated him at the right hand of the Father and who constantly intercedes for me. And because of that, I am righteous before Jesus and I can put my faith and trust in him. Well, God bless you today. And I pray that God will just uh, minister to you. I will uh, like to just pray for you before I go. Father, uh, we just thank you tonight for your amazing grace and mercy and love. God, we thank you that Genesis 3 and 4 isn't a story, just a story of how we fell and and fell into uh, uh, death and murder, but it's also the story of our redemption and, and of your love. So we thank you for that today, and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Excuse me, I'm, I got hiccups or something. Amen. All right. God bless you. Uh, just uh, want to want to remind you at 945 Sunday morning, we have our Facebook live and then uh, we are going to be here Sunday morning at 1030 live uh, in person. So if you're in the Cape May area uh, or if you're watching this and, you, and you, you're already part of our church, uh, if you're part of our church and you're watching this, uh, can I can I say to you kindly? It's time to come home. It's time to be here. It's time to get together. Um, you can wear a mask if you want. Uh, if if you don't want to wear a mask, you don't have to. Uh, but it, there's no more excuses. It's time to come back. You cannot um, and, and look at me. You cannot get the same thing on your couch as you get when you get together with a group of believers who are worshiping God together. So uh, we invite you to come. And we invite you to um, experience God's uh, blessing. If you're in the Cape May area, we meet in person at 1030. And we would love to see you. 
Um, and uh, if you can't make it here on Facebook, you're welcome to join us at 945 a.m. God bless you, and we will see you on Sunday.